Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. As you might have noticed, I don't really like shooting this 8-inch 300 Blackout SBR without the suppressor attached, especially when I'm shooting supersonic ammunition like I was doing in that clip. But I put my face through that muzzle blast because I wanted to put this through the muzzle blast. It's the Elzetta ZFL M60, and it's billed as the world's toughest flashlight. Well, first of all, why do we need a world's toughest flashlight? It's because when stuff hits the fan, there are times where light can make the difference between life or death. And this is, it doesn't matter whether you're defending your home at night against an intruder or you're caught in a natural disaster or you're stuck at the side of the road, whether there's a lot of traffic or no traffic at all. And when you need your light to turn on, it needs to turn on. And when you need your light in those situations to work, it can't fail simply because of the conditions under which you need to use it. And that's the idea behind the LZ of flashlights. They're designed to handle anything that you can survive or, or your weapon can survive. And when they say it's the world's toughest flashlight, they, just, they don't just say it, they show it with a series of videos and torture tests on their website. But until now, there hasn't been one video showing one light going through a series of these tests. As you can see, this has already been through the test and it still works just fine. But I wanna show you why it still works and I also wanna show you what it survived. What makes this video especially fun for me is I got my daughter to help me with some of these tests. And that's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The Alzetta ZFL M60 comes in 72 different combinations. For testing, I got the three cell model with the standard bezel and the rotary tail cap. It's also available in a two cell model with a crenellated bezel, a low profile bezel, a clicky end cap, a strobe end cap. There are a couple other end caps that I don't even remember. But basically, if Alzetta doesn't offer it, you probably don't need it. The ZFL M60 has a one inch diameter body like a lot of popular TAC lights. It's one of the few lights out there that works well for everyday carry or as a weapon light. And because of this, Elzetta also makes Picatinny and shotgun mounts. This mount is their new ZRX mount, and I'm gonna feature it in a separate video review. The Elzetta breaks down into four basic components and its batteries. And each component is available separately, so you can configure your light however you want, whenever you want. Elzetta gets their LED modules from Malkoth, who's already earned a great reputation by making upgraded light modules for many popular brands of flashlights. These modules have a machine brass body and have a full acrylic lens and potted electronics. That means there's basically nothing that can shatter in this LED module. That acrylic goes all the way down to the LED. The bezel, light body, and tail cap are machined from 6061T6 aluminum. And since the socket for the light module is machined to fit the M60 like a glove, the entire flashlight becomes a heat sink. This means that you can run your Elzetta as long as you want without worrying about damaging the electronics. And everything you see, including these batteries, is made in the US. That's a big part of the corporate stewardship of Elzetta the company. They hire locally and they buy locally. Because the electronics are potted in epoxy, there's no way for water to get at them. This is easily demonstrated by taking apart a flashlight underwater and then reassembling it. You shouldn't do this for just any flashlight, but it's not a problem for the Elzetta. One thing to note is that lithium batteries don't like water, and one of these batteries started to short very shortly after I did this little test. This is just a demonstration of how potted electronics work. It's not something that's actually gonna happen to your flashlight because the Alzetta is sealed at both ends with O-rings. However, even if those O-rings should fail, you don't have to worry about water ruining your light short term. This design also means that the electronics are protected from corrosion. This is salt water. This is one of the first things that I did with this light. And though I'm not suggesting that you could use this light as a dive light, it does give you the confidence to use it in a maritime environment. Its electronics are well protected from the salt, whether it's in the water or in the moisture in the air. You can get the Elzetta with either a spot or a flood LED module. But even the spot module shown here spills light everywhere. Not only does that let you see more than with most spot flashlights, the idea is that it helps to keep you from getting tunnel vision. This light is rated for 235 lumens of delivered light, meaning that's how much light makes it past the lens. 
Here's another really good weapon light, the Streamlight TLR1S, just for comparison purposes. You can see a much more distinct edge to the beam given off by this light. Though the spot of this beam is larger than the M60, it comes at the expense of broad scattered light like you get from the LZ. So when you see these two lights compared side by side, the LZ on the left and the TLR1S on the right, it's deceiving. With the LZ, you can see very well out in front of you, but you can also see what's at your feet. That's not something you really get with the TLR1S because of its design. LZ is known for allowing people to use their flashlights to hammer nails at expos and gun shows, and I wanted to recreate this myself with the flashlight that I had my hands on. As you can see, it's a horrible hammer. Just doesn't want to hit something in straight. But that light is still shining bright, and that has to do with the potted electronics. All the circuitry, all the soldering is fully supported by the epoxy, which means you're not going to break these parts of the electronics without breaking the epoxy first. Of course, we wouldn't expect the finish to hold up to something like that, but as you can see, the epoxied electronics, the potted electronics, had no problems with those high impulse impacts. Works just fine. When it's billed as the world's toughest flashlight, you know I'm going to run it over but there's actually a valid purpose to this test. Of course, I don't expect any of the parts themselves to crush, but the threading can be damaged through the pressure because this isn't supported equally from one end to the other. So this is an extreme test of whether or not those threads will break under side loads. That's awesome! Oh, cool! Did it work? Is it working? Yeah! That's one touch flashlight. <laughs> Man, this did look pretty, but uh, <laughs> it's still working. And the threads aren't even sticky at all. No problems. That's, that's impressive. Mm-hmm. I also wanted to demonstrate how sharp the bevel was on this non-crenellated bezel. It's actually pretty sharp, and I thought that a watermelon would be a good way of demonstrating this. The camera side, okay, hit it hard, hard. Like this? Big, use two hands, okay, watch this. Use two hands, bring it up over your head, and bam! That's it, get, get, get. All right, stop there. Do right there, two hands, hit it hard. Like you're trying to cut it with that edge. That's it. Good. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> a lot of flashlights, if you were to slam these into even just something like a watermelon, the lenses would be pushed back into the light. The lenses could crack or they could just be pushed out of place. <laughs> Brain oh, juice. Nasty. Brain juice and guts everywhere. <laughs> oh. Kids. This didn't do anything to that solid acrylic lens in that Malkoff module. And just look at the damage done by that bezel. Even though it's not crenellated, it's still very usable as a defensive weapon. Very few non-crenellated flashlights would have been able to do damage like this. There's no question there are, are a dozen or more different torture tests that I didn't include that people do to flashlights. But I think the tests that I put this through are enough to show that the Alzetta ZFL M60 is tough where it counts. At $195, this flashlight is priced right there with other high-end tactical flashlights. And when you, when you consider what this can go through, you start to see that that's actually a good value for people who need flashlights to work no matter what. And that's why Alzetta is getting an increasing fan base in military and law enforcement communities. If you want to learn more about LZ and the different flashlights that you can get through them, be sure to click the link in the video description below. If you like this video, please take the time to log into YouTube and click the like button. Now more than ever, YouTube needs to know that you like firearms-oriented programming. And be sure to click up here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff like this LZ flashlight. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.